2015 has heralded the beginning of the end for plastic-bodied flagship smartphones. From the HTC One M9 to Samsung's Galaxy S6 handsets and even the Huawei P8, a full metal unibody has now become the de facto design for almost every top-end handset we've seen this year. Except, it seems, on the LG G4. Always keen to tear up the rulebook, LG's latest handset has gone full leather this time round, using genuine vegetable tanned, full-grain cowhide on the rear of the phone. That's not the only thing that makes the G4 unique either, as its rear camera is the first to use a color spectrum sensor that can supposedly read colors in exactly the same way as their human eye. LG G4 Design It's an intriguing combination, but we were pleasantly surprised by just how comfortable the leather back felt when we went hands-on with it at LG's launch event. The stitching down the center is a particularly classy touch, and the smooth tan leather option provided just as much grip as the stippled black version. Measuring 149 by 75 by 89 mm thick, it's not the slimmest of phones, but LG said that its customers were more than willing to sacrifice a few extra millimeters for a more ergonomic design, and we'd be inclined to agree. However, the leather cladding does add a considerable premium onto the handset, and at time of writing pre-order prices were starting at around $949 SIM free, which is £30 more than an entry-level Galaxy S6. In our eyes, we much preferred the curved, textured rear of the G4 over the flat glass of the S6, but just in case this is a little out of your price range or indeed comfort zone for anyone worrying about the poor cows, the G4 is also available in cheaper ceramic and the metallic variants both plastic really, which are currently available for pre-order for around $799 SIM free. The curve extends to the front of the screen as well, but the arc is so infinitesimally small that you'll barely even notice it unless you put the phone face down on the table. It's certainly nowhere near as curvy as the LG G Flex 2, but at least it should still help protect the screen if it happens to fall face down on the floor. LG G4 Display The 55 inches 2560 by 1440 display was one of the standout features on the LG G3, so it's no surprise that LG has reprised this resolution for the G4. The resolution isn't quite as special as it once was, though, as both the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge now have 2560 by 1440 resolution displays as well. What's more, they both have higher pixel densities of 576 pixels per inch ppi, thanks to their smaller 5 1-inch screens, beating the G4's pixel density of 534 p by quite some margin. LG may not have the sharpest screen in the business anymore, but its secret weapon is undoubtedly its brand new IPS quantum panel. Not to be confused with LG's quantum dot technology used inside its TVs, the G4's screen uses a new type of liquid crystal that's meant to enhance brightness and overall color accuracy. However, LG's boldest claim about the G4's display relates to its color reproduction, and sadly that's not one we could back up during our calibration tests. According to LG, it's the only smartphone display that can reach 98% of the Digital Cinema Initiative DCI color gamut, which covers a much wider range of colors than the traditional sRGB gamut, particularly when it comes to the number of shades of red. LG says this equates to about 120% of the sRGB gamut, but our color calibrator showed the G4 was only displaying 96.3% of the sRGB color gamut. What's more, it was the G4's reds and yellows that fell short of the gamut boundary. Of course, 96.3% is still a highly respectable score for an IPS display, and it's easily one of the most subjectively pleasing screens we've seen outside of Samsung's Super AMOLED screens on the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, even if the nitty-gritty numbers in our tests don't quite live up to LG's promises. LG G4 Camera Aside from the screen, 
The G4's other headline features is its 16 megapixel rear camera. It's the world's first smartphone to have a color spectrum sensor on the back, which LG says is able to read and interpret colors in exactly the same way as your own eyeballs. It can read both the RGB spectrum and infrared, and will automatically adjust the white balance to make objects look more lifelike. The camera also has a wide f1.8 aperture lens and a huge 1.5-6 inches sensor, too, allowing it to let in up to 80% more light than your average smartphone snapper and take more accurate pictures in low lighting conditions. LG's also improved the camera's optical image stabilization and we're pleased to see the G3's laser autofocus making a welcome return as well. The real star of the LG G4's camera, though, is its new manual mode, which lets you adjust the white balance, manual focus, shutter speed and ISO live on screen, giving you plenty of flexible controls to be a little more creative with your photography. There's also an auto exposure lock button, which automatically locks the ISO and shutter speed no matter where you point the camera. This is particularly handy for stitching several shots together, as it keeps the exposure steady as you pan across a landscape, for instance. It's a shame you can't combine this with a dedicated panorama mode, though. However, photo enthusiasts will be pleased to hear you can save your files in RAW as well as JPG, making them easier to edit afterwards on your PC, and shutter speed times reach all the way up to 30 seconds, allowing you to take shots of cityscape light streams and liquid waterfalls, for example. LG's also included a quick launch mode, so you can take instant snapshots without having to unlock the phone first. It's certainly very handy. As LG says it launches in just 0.6 seconds, but we wish it hadn't been mapped to the rear lower volume key, as this is possibly one of the least accessible buttons on the entire phone, particularly if you're trying to shoot in landscape mode. As for the front camera, this has an 8 megapixel sensor and LG's new gesture shot feature will let you take 4 selfies 2 seconds apart by opening and closing your fist twice. It's a fun feature if you're out with friends, but our tests shots could be quite overexposed in the background and there was quite a lot of noticeable noise cancelling present as well, which smudged the edges of certain objects. We'd also recommend keeping the beauty filter on low, as this tended to blur some of our facial features together and wiped out almost all sense of skin texture and fine detail. LG G4 Performance and Battery Life we initially thought the G4 would use the same octa-core 20 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 chipset as LG's own G Flex 2 and the HTC One M9, but LG has actually chosen the slightly slower hexi-core 18 GHz Snapdragon 808 chip instead. This should still provide plenty of speed, though and its 3GB of RAM is more than enough for handling multiple apps simultaneously. In our base Mark OS 2 benchmarks, for instance, the G4's overall score of 1502 sits comfortably in between the Snapdragon 810-powered HTC One M9, which scored 1463, and the Samsung Galaxy S6, which scored 1643. Its browser mark score of 1919 was also high, and web browsing was beautifully smooth with no signs of judder whatsoever. However, the G4 fell behind in our base mark by 1-1 graphics benchmarks, scoring 24,998 in medium quality settings averaging 23.9 fps in the Dunes test and 31.9 fps in the Hangar test. The HTC One M9, on the other hand, scored 28,074 overall, but even this is outclassed by the super-fast Galaxy S6, which scored a massive 31,157 overall. In real terms, though, the G4 is more than capable of playing complex 3D games, and games such as Hearthstone ran perfectly smoothly when we tried them out for ourselves. One big advantage the G4 has over its rivals is its expandable storage. 
All handsets come with 32GB of built-in memory, but this can be expanded by up to 128GB via a microSD, making it much more flexible than either the One M9 or Galaxy S6. It also means you don't have to pay more to get a high-capacity phone. Instead, the only price decision you have to make here is whether you want the more expensive leather model or not. Another point in the G4's favor is its big 3,000mAh removable battery. We haven't had a chance to run our full battery life test on the G4 yet, but we'll be updating this review later. LG X40 and Android 5.1 the G4 runs the latest version of Android 5.1, but it also comes with LG's new UX 4.0 interface over the top. In keeping with Google's new material design scheme, it's much cleaner and flatter than the G3's interface, and we much prefer how its smart notices have been integrated with the main clock and weather widget on the main homepage. LG's smart bulletin board lies to the left of your main screen, which houses LG's health app your calendar, music controls and other quick start guides, but thankfully you can select which bulletins you want to appear, or disable the entire panel if you don't want it clogging up your home screen. You can also choose whether to allow notifications on the lock screen, and LG's knock code pattern returns as an alternative method of unlocking your handset. First seen on the G3, this lets you tap out a specific pattern on screen even when the display is turned off to unlock your phone. It's very effective, and perhaps a little more secure than the more common unlock pattern settings you'll find on other smartphones. Other handy features include a new smart settings menu. This can automatically switch sound profiles when you get home, for instance, and you can also enable it to turn on the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings as soon as you step through your front door, or turn them off again when you leave. Likewise, plugging in a pair of earphones or connecting it to a Bluetooth speaker can prompt it to automatically open an app like Spotify or a game, for instance, to save you the hassle of rooting around for it in the app tray. Meanwhile, Smart Power Saving will warn you when apps are using too much power, and will create a smart notice prompt to let you shut them down in order to help save battery. Likewise, the G4's graphics RAM will put the CPU to sleep when there's nothing happening on the display, helping you squeeze a few more hours out of it when the phone is locked. The new Event Pocket feature in the Basic Calendar app is also quite useful, as this lets you add new events by dragging images, text, memos, tasks, locations and even information from Facebook directly into your monthly planner. It could use some refinements, though. For instance, we weren't able to drag a pocket image onto an already scheduled event without it creating a separate entry. LG G4 Conclusion the G4 may be coming slightly late to this year's flagship smartphone race, but it's certainly got a wealth of features to help it stand out from the competition. While we're not particularly keen on the ceramic or metallic models, the leather back is surprisingly elegant and we definitely prefer it to the slippery glass back of the Galaxy S6. The G4's unique color spectrum sensor also puts it neck and neck with the camera on the back of the S6 and we think its display looks just as sharp and punchy as Samsung's Super AMOLED panels. In this sense, we'd say it's a genuine alternative to either of Samsung's flagship handsets, and we'd definitely choose the G4 over the HTC One M9. However, we'll have to wait and see how the G4 fares in our battery life tests before we can say definitively which handset you should buy. We also don't know how much the phone will cost on contract yet, but we wouldn't be surprised if prices started around $59 per month, much like the Galaxy S6. Thanks for watching Phone Frog. Please subscribe for more videos.